there was a gentleman online who asked me the question, where should I attach the shield of a cable? Should I attach it to signal ground or to earth ground? Very good question. And I, I think, said, I think many me, people ask this. <laughs> yes. And I said, let me give you the answer now, and then I'll explain in a minute. I'll explain later why. The answer is you don't connect it to either. You don't connect it to earth ground, and you don't connect it to signal ground. The shield should be a 360 degree attachment to the chassis. Whether the chassis is grounded or not is irrelevant. The reason a chassis contains energy, as you know, is it's a Faraday cage, right? And the shield is simply a continuation of the Faraday cage. That's all a shield is. It simply, can, it continues the concept of containing fields. So when I send energy from the left-hand circuit board in through a connector into a cable, if I've attached the shield properly to that enclosure, none of the energy will escape out through the opening around the shield. In contrast, when I see, let me find it. Ah, here it is. I hate these things. RJ45s. Somebody asked me once, didn't you ever use RJ45s when you were in telecom? And the answer is yes, we use them, but not for shielded cables. Because look how this thing works. There are two pins of this little connector that attach to the shield. It's not a 360 degree attachment of the shield. There are two pins that attach to the shield. So the shield still has an opening between the shield and this connector. We had so many problems with this actually. Everybody that uses them does. If you put energy inside the cable, it'll escape out. If, you, if the outer shield collects energy from the outside world, it'll couple into the system. I think we should explain this a little bit. When you say connecting the cable, it means like all is, well, the shield is connected all around to the yes. connector. But is in con this yes. case... In other words, you choose a connector where you can, and it can be a D connector. Yeah. It can be a cannon connector. It can be, you know, a military style. It can be whatever you want but the shield has to attach all the way around the housing of the connector. That's the 360, the, what do you say? 360 degree attachment. And when the two pieces mate together, they have to have a 360 degree attachment. In other words, they have to seal. You have to have connectors that seal to one another properly. Let me show you another picture. When I first, I went to L3 in 2003. And the first week I was on the job, I was lucky enough to fall into three problems that were so easy to solve, it was like falling off a log. And, and this was one of them. One of the engineers in the company came to me and he said, we have a system with a metal enclosure and we have a connector, a cable that's shielded and we're having an EMI problem with it. And I went to the lab and what I saw was that they had a plastic 25 pin D connector. They attached the, the uh, drain wire of the shield to one of the pins of this connector. And then they attached that pin to a, um, to a trace that was one and a quarter millimeters wide to a screw about, 50, about five centimeters away two inches away. And they wondered why that wasn't a good enough shield on the cable. And I said, are you guys kidding me? I said, do you know what the impedance of that shield is relative to the chassis? And, and believe it or not, one of the engineers said, well, we put an ohm meter on it and it was zero ohms. And I said, yes, at DC, it was zero ohms. What frequency are you failing at? And they said, you know, like 400 megahertz or whatever, 300 megahertz. And I said, what do you think the inductance of this attachment is at 300 megahertz? And they went, oh, I don't know. 
So we got out a table and we looked up inductance and we determined that the impedance of that connection was, in fact, it's written on here somewhere, 18 ohms. So that's like putting an 18 ohm resistor in series with the shield and then wondering why the shield isn't working right. People do this stuff all the time, Robert. Uh, and then but I understand this because, uh, for example, there is like, I think many people, they forget that there is something that impedance is not resistance. And they, they, they don't know that uh, if something is, for example, zero ohm or, or one ohm at DC, it doesn't mean it's going to be zero ohm or one ohm for 100 megahertz. That's right. And there, there can be like huge difference. Oh, enormous difference. And not only that, there's the idea of containing the fields. Let me go back to, where the heck is it? This picture right here. When you send energy from the board through the connector into the cable, remember, and I know you know this, I want everyone else to remember this, the energy is in the plastic surrounding the wires. And if you don't seal that cable to that enclosure, that shield to that enclosure, the energy from that cable is just going to escape out through the opening. Some of the energy is going to move out through the opening. And again, if you couple external energy onto the outside of the shield, then it's just simply going to go through the opening to the inside of the box. 